bamu bamu oju aro se bamu arugo ojo igba ojo akiri sore asore kiri o wi be se be asoro maye ato peri ogbo ato peri ohun gbogbo ori ko gbe kan ji kan lu kopa ka bi esi eledumare alapala to so ni aye ro so kiri so la kiri so kiri la kiri so kiri la kiri so kiri la kiri o la kiri ka 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 ni ka ni laya ah o gbe nu mu ti asola o gbe nu ajele bo sogo aja no ku ti mi ko kiji 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 ka bi esi o Lord you reign Lord you reign King of all ages King of all ages You are the ancient of days Lord you reign Lord you reign Your throne is established Lord in justice and righteousness My anana ba ka shata ya na ko sha Oh great are you Lord Great are you Lord You are greatly to be praised Greatly to you be praised Lord you reign Lord you reign We pray Let your glory, let your glory, let your glory. 
Bishop David Abiria. Why you are blessed now is for you to bless others. You will not even be able to count the number of blessings you have in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm enjoying mine too. And the light of God is here in Jesus' name. Thank God that you have the grace to be a Nigerian on a day like this. The position you have is to bless humanity and glorify God. And if anything, that should be our prayers for all our leaders. So tonight, please permit me to share on the topic, maximizing the purpose of new creation. Why did he make you a new creation? The why of a thing is more of inquiring about it, searching to know why. Because if you don't know why of a thing, you will never maximize that thing. That's why the most matured Christians ask questions. And if you watch it in the ministry of Jesus, he appreciates people who ask questions. Peter one day said, Master, we have left all. What shall be our portion? And immediately Jesus answered. I observe in scriptures there were no questions that Jesus did not answer. You care to ask? He cares to answer. Master, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus said, you must be born again. Ask questions. Why am I born again? Is it just to go to heaven? Good. But you are not going to heaven right now. You still live on earth here. How do I integrate my new birth on earth here? In order not to be molested by the devil any longer? Why do I have to get saved if I will still be oppressed by witches and wizards after I give my life to Jesus? Why? What can I do? How can I come out of it? But new creation the mystery of new creation would be appreciated by understanding the original creation. So permit me to get us back to Genesis, the beginning. Something happened. New creation simply means repeated creation. So where was the original creation? How was the original creation? What was the purpose for the original creation? Original creation became old creation when he fell and by redemption became new creation. What was the original man like? What was the original creation like? What was the initial creation before it became corrupted? Old simply means corrupted. Genesis chapter 1. 
let's understand what was God's intention for creating man. Verse 26, beginning. And God said, speaking to Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us make man. How? In our image. In our image. In our picture. And after our likeness, let him resemble us. Let him look like us. Let him be our duplicate. Let him be exactly like us. Let him be someone we can relate with. And so, God made the heart for man and heaven for himself. And actually, the heart was meant to be a duplicate of heaven. A place where God could come down to and walk with man. So the original creation was intended for relationship. Now many believers don't understand this. You see, we talk so much about things to get from God rather than talking about our relationship with him. Can you imagine a man and a woman? What makes the best of home is relationship. Not money, not position. Otherwise, why will people who are wealthy be seeking divorce? No relationship. No relationship is the cure for all marital crisis. Get deeper in relationship and join your union. The same thing with our relationship with God. Get deeper in relationship with God. I would rather get you to know God more than to make you have things materially through prayer. Man had no need because he was in a relationship. Yeah, man had no need. And anything he needed, he got it just with a split of a moment. He could cross to any realm. He was aquatic, he was terrestrial, and he was celestial. He had divine life, incorruptible life. The life of God was inside the man. And can I tell you something? Satan was actually envious of that life. That was the, the main reason for the temptation. He was so envious the way God was relating with man. And he knew the only way to get man off God and get God off man is to make him sin. Sin brings corruption. In case you think sin is pleasure, you are deceiving yourself. You will meet it in the future. Don't toy with sin if you don't want to end as a toy in the hand of the devil. Many people don't realize this. Little lie, little deception, little stealing, little fornication, little adultery. You are cutting down your life. You don't know. You think you are enjoying it? No. Satan knows what he's heading for. He wants to get you. He wants to destroy your relationship with God. He wants your life to drop. That's why the Bible says, uh, you know, all men have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So when you sin, you come short. You become shorter than you should be spiritually of the glory of God. So God said, let's make man in our image. After our likeness, let him have power like we do. And in verse 28, and God made man and he blessed him. The word blessed means empower. He empowered him to be whatever God is. He blessed him. So he had such mental capacity. He named all the animals without repeating the name for the other. He went to the sea to name them because there are all many of the animals from the sea couldn't come out. He had to go there. He, how did he get to name Igu? How did he name? He went there. And if you understand this, it simply means you have control over all the spheres of life. Full control. You can control the air. You can control the ground. You can control the sea. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> That's the man that God made. Loaded. Spiritually, physically. No sickness, no disease. All man needed was food, no medicine. And we're getting back to that. 
We're getting back to that. <laughs> when you just be living your life, enjoying yourself, no sickness, no disease. I can't hear everybody say amen. You know, what you believe is what you become. So new creation, as it were, is to bring us back to the initial creation. To bring us from the wilderness that sin took us to. To bring us from corruption back to Eden. The place of pleasure. The place of enjoyment. The place where God comes down to relate with us. That's where we are. First Peter chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible tells us that he saved us from the corruption that is in this world. If you are born again, you are delivered from corruption. Your life is no longer corrupted. Say amen somebody. Amen. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, you have to grow out of your consciousness of the old life into the new life. You have to grow. And it is the word of God that enables us to experience that growth, just like we are hearing right now. More light, better life. More insight, great foresight. More revelation, new elevation. That's the way it works. So our greatest task after we are born again, therefore, is to get enlightened, to get more knowledge of the reason why we are saved. By new creation, new life is imparted upon us. But we are to develop the new creation mentality. Because the, the subject of new creation is so vast. It is as far as your eye can see. Think about the man God created in Genesis. That is the model man. That is the model man. A man that had no need. A man that begged for nothing. You will get to a stage in your life, if you understand this, that you won't need to beg for anything in your life again. I thought somebody said amen to that. <laughs> Can that time ever come? In case you don't know, here is a testimony. For many years now, I don't even buy things. I just get things. Why? Because Moses had a taste of it talking to the children of Israel. He said, I shall remember the Lord thy God, which give the power to get. Not give the money to buy. The power to get. We are getting to that time. When things will just come to you. Things will just come to you. Huh. <laughs> I told you what you believe is what you become. If you say, oh, how can that be possible? Well, you'll be left behind. Call liberals here, great pastors here. You don't have to beg anybody to run ministry. No. No. He who sent you has enough in his hand to give to you. When he sent them, he said, when I sent you without post and script, did you lack anything? And Peter can be very argumentative. If he suffered, they would tell Jesus, Oga, uh, when we're there around Oshodi, we suffer all. <laughs> he said, we lack nothing. And Thomas, the doctor, was there. He said, we lack nothing. That was the life that Jesus lived. The New Testament, new creation. He never begged for anything, yet he never lacked anything. Nobody could harass him. If there was no physical money, he could get it from anywhere. There was no food to feed 5,000 people, only five loaves of bread. The Bible says he himself knew what to do. Now, they were fed not because they were loaves. Because a man who could turn five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people could have used zero to feed them. What's the difference between five and zero? Other than he didn't want to look like a magi magician. That's new creation. A state of no want. A state of no begging. A state where the original life of God is brought back to the earth. A state of escape from corruption. 
a state where robbers come to see you and they can't find you. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know why we think many of these things are not possible? Because we live among men and we think like men and we listen to men. But as we behold him in knowledge, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. That was what happened in the first church. They looked at them, they were like Christ, so they called them Christians. That's where we are getting to. So, new creation is not about description. It's about manifestation. Manifesting the life of God. Manifesting the life. You know what Jesus said? Because, you see, you need to have this mentality. You need to create this mentality in you by increasing your knowledge content and depth. Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 to 15 uh, when Lot had departed from Abraham the Lord said to Abraham, now Abraham, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are to the north, to the south, to east and west all the land which you can see all you can see from the word of God, all you can see everything written here is believable believable because God is not a joker, God is not a liar. He will not tell you about what he has not provided for. If he says you can live in health, you can live in health. If he can, says you can live in prosperity, you can live in prosperity. If he says you can live in harmony and peace with your family, you can. It is where we apply our faith to that brings result for us. Some couples don't believe they can have peace in their homes. So every day they are fighting. Because what you believe is what you become. As a man thinks, so he becomes. Proverbs 23, 7. It's as far as we can see. Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a rod on my mambo tree. And God said, that's all right. What you see is what I give. What limits God is not power, but what you see. If you can see it, he cannot help you. If you cannot see it, God cannot help you. That's why every time God appears to man, the first thing is to make the man see. He is to make the man see. When he came to Abraham, he is to make him see. Abraham, come on, stand up here. Start counting the star. If you can count it, that's how the number of your children will be. Abraham said, I've started counting. I've lost counting. I can't count again. And God said, that's how your children will be. You will start counting. You won't be able to count them again. You will lose count for it. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah. And that's how you'll be blessed. Yeah. That's how your life will be. You'll be so amazed that the things happen in your life. You look like a pauper today. Something good is coming out of you. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, look at me here. I'm that testimony. As a young pastor, I had no bed to sleep. Slept on bench. I had only one pair of shoes. Only one coat. Amen. Thank God for it. My fan was very wonderful. My ceiling fan. When I put it on, it's a lot of, uh, you have to choose whether to sleep in the, under the heat or to have noise <laughs> sleeping with you. When you put it on, you hear the sound, waga, 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 it takes off. Amen. <laughs> but I didn't see it. I saw this. Yeah. Amen. It was a moment of life. It was a passage. It's like going through that like little child I talked about earlier. Growing up. And growing up. Subduing all the circumstances around you. That's the way it works. So our duty is to keep finding out. To keep examining. Because that's how mentality changes. Mentality changes with knowledge. Mentality changes with what? With knowledge. Mentality changes with knowledge. Whatever you feed into your mind is what controls your life. Mentality simply means attitude. It means behavior. You are now born again. You should behave like one. You should behave like one born again. When I had no money in my pocket, I put my hand in my pocket as one with money. People come to me, even then, I say, 
Brother David, can you borrow me some money? Can you lend me some money? Because I look like a lender. You have to behave what God said. You know, as soon as God told Abraham, you will be father of nations. You know what Abraham did? He will sit in front of his house as a father. Everybody passing by. Come on here. Come and eat. Come on here. It's getting late. Come and sleep here for the night. He was behaving the father until he became the father. Behave this new creation. Behave it. Behave it. Behave it. Behave like Jesus. On the sea, he was calm. He slept so deep that they had to wake him up. Peter said, hey, master, we perish. Jesus said, not, not when I'm here. And he stood up. Peace be still. No argument, no discussion. Many of us discuss too much with the devil. And ask very funny questions. Why is my life like this? What have God What's happening to me here? I can't understand. Nothing is working. When I hear people say that, I feel like God is being insulted. Nothing is happening in my life. Nothing to show for my life. I've been married, but nothing to show. I've been working, nothing to show. Insult on God. Nothing is happening because you don't see anything happening. Because you are among men. You think like men. You live like men. You talk like men. Because you don't know what they don't know. If you know what they don't know, you'll stop talking like they talk. Don't blame me the way I'm talking. I'm talking not as a proud man, but on the kind of knowledge. You see, when you have knowledge, people count you as proud. But you are just natural. You are just natural. I can't because of you appraising me as proud. Come below. No, I'm just me. I'm just me. Amen. It's like somebody who has a car and he doesn't want people to abuse him that he has a car. He comes down from his car and he's walking around the street. <laughs> I can come down. I'm not pretending. I'm not orchestrating what I'm doing and where I am. No, it's just me. I grew up. You see, when you grow up, you can't reduce. When you jump up, you have to reduce. I grew up. I grew up in knowledge. Now, what name did they not call Jesus? They called him all kinds of names. Proud. Oh, oh, no. How can somebody be talking like that? How can he say before Abraham was I am? How old is he after all? I was there when he was named. They said all of that to Jesus, but Jesus never minded. If you watch the gospel very well, Jesus never explained to people. He made declarations. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I have life in me. Before Abraham was, I am. What do you mean? That's what I mean. That's Jesus. He was too sure that he will not shift his ground for anybody. Permit me if what I'm saying is challenging your intellectualism, challenging what you used to believe, but I can change it. I was ministering someday and I said, I cannot be sick. And one good man from Baptist where I was said, that's blasphemy. How can somebody say he cannot be sick? Meanwhile, he's been suffering all kinds of affliction, ranging from 12 years to 16 years, according to him. He had a can of drugs that he takes every day, three times in a day, eight pills at sitting. And he got back home that day, Sunday afternoon, and as he wanted to take the next dose, the can dropped from his hand. As he had the word, I cannot be sick. Ah, so let's leave this can for a while. Left it the whole day, no symptom. Following day, no symptom. A whole week, no symptom. Whole month, no symptom. One year after, no symptom. And he came back. He said, I have to share my testimony. Come up from the natural into the supernatural. That's what it means. Man was divine. Man was supernatural. He got corrupted by the enemy. And Jesus came to redeem him. That's what we call new creation. But our job does not stop there. It begins with finding out. And that's what this book is all about. This book is all about. You can change your gear. You can change your level. You can leave others behind. In spiritual race, overtaking is allowed. The first shall be the last. The last shall be the first. So stop celebrating how long you have been in the faith. Oh, I've been born again in the last 25 years. Where is the proof? Jesus said, bring forth the fruit of repentance. Nobody knows how long you have been in the faith. 
They want to see the effect of the, the reflection of the faith. Peter was with him for a short while. They knew that they had been with Christ. I've been coming to church. I'm a deacon here. I'm an elder. I'm a pastor. You can be anything. You can be bishop. You can be archbishop. You can be anything. It makes no difference. There are many, many poor bishops. Many. No trace of blessing around them. Tie two makes no man. It rather ties people down. <laughs> what am I saying to you? You have to keep finding out. Why? Now, let's begin to come down the line within the time we have remaining. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let's quickly read that from verse 17 all the way to 20. And we'll quickly see something there that new creation is not just a status, but a call to responsibility. You know, let me get back again. When a child is born into a family, he brings joy. But as he grows into a son, he brings pride to the family. Let me take it the other way around. The joy of a father is a child, but the pride of a father is a son. You don't introduce a child in the house. As a matter of fact, when your guest comes, you tell the children, hey, go and play, go and play. But when you have a son, please meet with my son. Am I right? When Jesus was born, angels were sent to announce his birth. Where was the father? He was in heaven. But when he became a son, he came out. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Until recently, when a child goes to start university education, they call it matriculation. Nobody goes there. But on graduation, you see different caps, different headgear, satellite dishes. <laughs> they say, Madam, where are you going to? You mean by now you don't know where I'm going to? <laughs> Didn't you hear that my son is a first class graduate? Make you sit down there. Spiritually speaking, as babes in Christ, we come to him as liabilities. He caters for us. He doesn't want us to cry. But he wants us to grow into responsibilities. What makes a man earn value and relevance in a home is that he's taking on responsibility. We all know, some of you have two, three, four children or something like that. When they are growing up, they have equal rights and written. But as they grow up, each person is distinguishes himself. And you may find out, child number four may be the toast of the family. Why? Because he's the one who cares to buy a car for the daddy. Is the one who cares to take the mom to Australia in first class. So, your accepting responsibility in the kingdom changes your value before God. Now, I'd like us to please reason with me. Because from this passage, you are going to see something. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, therefore, if any man, please take note, any man, no matter your background, poor, rich, unschooled, if any man, because everyone is equal before God as salvation, if any man be in Christ, what happened to him? He is a new, new creature. And Paul said, what do I mean by that? I mean old things 
have passed away. They are no longer there. You may choose to retain it, but God said, I can't see it again. All things, spiritual, mental, physical, including sickness, disease, poverty, that you have not changed your room does not mean that your life has not changed. That your food has not changed does not mean that your future has not changed. You may be going through some things, but you will soon finish going through it. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you may not look like it, but God made you so. I don't think of what I look like. I think of what God has made me to be. It may take a while, but please bear with me. I'm just under construction. When I'm finished, come back. I tell people who are praising me today, please, you are too fast at praising me. Come back tomorrow. Somebody is working on me. When I'm done, you will like me. All things have become new. And please look at that further with me. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He saved us and gave us assignment. Get back to Genesis. God made man to enjoy the garden, but he also gave him work in the garden. Keep it, tend it. Christianity is not a call, or not just a call, for pleasure. It's also a call. To labor. And Paul went for them all. Look at that with me, please. Verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So we are to benefit and we are to represent him. Verse 20. Now then. Now then, now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We are saved to be partakers and at the same time to be caretakers. To partake of his nature and then to caretake for his kingdom. And that changes your rating and your value in the kingdom. Now in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, repeated in chapter 5 verse 10, he has redeemed us Everybody enjoys that. Just like babies, children, enjoy the home. Everybody is serving you in the home. But the time comes, they will send you, bring cup. A time comes, they will send you, bring my slippers. A time comes, they will send you, go and fetch some loaf of bread for me. And your value begins to show. A time comes, your mom is going out, tells you, here is rice. Beans, yam, this is cooker, this is, uh, you know, the match to use. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you like, die. <laughs> and that's why many of us at the time of our lives say, well, why has God left me? He didn't leave you. He wants you to mature. He wants you to grow. He wants you to grow. Why does he want you to grow so you can make a show to the devil? So you can show the son and the daughter of whom you are. Don't you know every time you fight the devil, God is proud. proud. Not that you cry to him. Why did David become a proud boy in the family? Because he went and faced Goliath. He was a jewel in Israel. A toast to everybody. Why? He pushed his chest out. You see, many believers who keep having problems if you don't get to a point of accepting responsibility for the kingdom of God. 
we are redeemed as kings and what, sir? And priests. King for royalty, priest for loyalty. Kings for benefit, priest for responsibility. So we have as our new creation status from that passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 17 to 20 and first, I mean, and Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, we have the duty of kingship and priesthood. Kingship and priesthood. We are to enjoy the benefits. But we are also to take on the responsibility. We are called to go back to relationship with God and in the process develop our potentials for which we have Jesus as our reference point. I know what Jesus said. If you believe the works I do, you shall do and greater you will do. It's not me who says so. It's Jesus who says so. He said you can do greater than he did. Nobody saying amen. amen. I take it wrong. I may not be there, but I'm going there. Because what I believe will come to pass one day. Amen. It's only a matter of time. Jesus told me so. So it's not pride. If I give you a car, are you proud? No, it's me who gave you. So how can I be riding this big car? Uh, to his house. He gave you, he wants you to ride it. Jesus said, I will do the works he did and greater. And I believe it. And somebody's here who believe it also. Yeah. At least I'm sure of our pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are back to relationship with him. We have to develop the relationship by fellowship, by the word, in prayer, and several other things we must have been taught as a church. But we must take it higher. Let's accept responsibility for reconciliation of our world back to God. So he can have more new creation to join us. We have been enjoying kingship. Let us now accept priesthood. And if you go back to the Old Testament, you see the duties of priests. And that's what we are. We have become priests. Among others, priests are intercessors. And it's time for the church to accept this responsibility. To intercede for our world. To intercede for more souls to be saved. It's time for us to grow from praying for bread and butter to asking God to save souls. We see them on every, every side. We see them on our streets. We see them in our neighborhood. Today, you don't have to go far to meet a mission field. They are everywhere. To pray. To pray. To reconcile the world back to God. Is the ultimate purpose of our new creation. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray. He said, when we pray, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, he said, when ye pray, this is the pattern. Our Father which art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Give him worship. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on heart here. And what is the will of God? To have all men saved. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. The will of God is to have all men saved. Thy will be done on heart as it is in heaven. And thereafter, give us this day our daily bread. And going down the line in verse 33, he says, Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall become additions to you. By the grace of God, that's how I live my life. I hardly pray for anything personal, yet I don't lack anything personal. Seek ye for the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, I know what to do. All other things shall be added unto you. Stop claiming things. Start claiming souls. Start claiming. 
that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God. That's what we are called to do. We are called to reconcile the world back to God. We are called to reconcile the world back to God. In your neighborhood, there are wee wee smokers, drunkards, people who don't know the difference between their right hand and their left, and all they are waiting for is for somebody to pray for them. Somebody who will pray for them. Second duty of priesthood is soul winning. Soul winning and soul establishment. There are many who have been saved for a long time. They have not been instrumental to saving others. How do you think your Heavenly Father will look at you with pride? Soul winning and soul establishment. Do you know why the church is running dry today? Because we sit down in the church doing nothing to the outside world. And Jesus commanded us in virtually all the gospels. Go ye into the world. Matthew 28, 19. Mark 16, 15. Go ye into the world. Luke 14, 21, 23. Go to the lanes, to the streets. Bring the poor, bring the lame, bring the maimed. Bring the ones that have no food. Bring them, bring them. Because they are the ones who will not reject you. You know, in that passage, Jesus told a parable of a man who made a great feast and invited people to come, but they made excuses they didn't come. And Jesus said, leave the rich. Go and bring the poor. Go and bring the poor. Because they have the potential. I can make them rich. I don't know what I'm talking about. In 1996, a man came to the church. He had no money. He borrowed money to travel from Jos to Kaduna. And he had the word. Gave his life to Jesus. He was a Muslim. Today he's running business in billions. Bring the poor. Bring the poor. Jesus said. Jesus said, now go again. Go to the highway. Go to the edges. And compare them to come. That my house may be filled. I want more children. That my house may be filled. I want more children. That my house may be filled. I want more children. That's what Jesus said. We need to accept responsibility. Otherwise, we will end as liabilities. How do you feel that a child is in your house that is not growing? Five years, ten years. After a while, you feel sorry. That's how the church is. The church is feeding. The church is eating. Yet the church is not growing. The church is not moving. The church is not reaching out. That's how God feels. Go, Jesus said. Go. Jesus said, do not say, there are yet four more months and the harvest will come. He said, lift up now your eyes and look. The harvest is here. Everywhere is ripe. Go, 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 go. And he said that to all believers without exemption, including pastors. So I take up that responsibility and I go. Jesus said, go. I go. I go to marketplace. I go to street corners. I go and sit down with people who have local drinks, like Jesus did. Drinking, I sit down with them. Smoking, I sit down with them. Why? I must bring them. Jesus said, go and bring them. That my house may be filled. That's our duty as priests, as people, as new creation. We go to show them the new life we have. We go to share our testimonies with them. We go to tell them Jesus can save you. Jesus can heal you. We go there with smile and they see it right there on our faces. Our pastor said, I'm a young man and that's the truth. <laughs> I look young, look young every day. Why? Because as I go out, he refreshes me. Praise the Lord. And I don't beg for anything. And he rewards his laborer. He that reaped and gathered souls, he will reward them. He will reward them. John 4, 35, 36. That's what Jesus does. We must wake up as God's people. We must take the lights from the church to the world and bring them in. And bring them in. God said, verse 23, Luke 14. He said, go and bring them until my house is filled. God wants his house to be filled. He wants it to be filled first time, second time, third time. He wants churches to be filled with people. And I have observed, 
A church that wins souls is an ever-growing church. And not only that, it's a church that will keep experiencing signs and wonders and miracles. Because I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The greatest of God's power is at the back of soul winning and soul establishment. And you know what? That is where our crown lies. You are never going to be crowned as a child of God. You are going to be crowned for the works you did in the house of God. And more stars will be added to you for the souls that are saved and established. So I go out every time. Somebody asks me, what about security? I say, I'm a dead man. Nobody's looking for me. <laughs> Secure, what? I'm a dead man. Do you want to kill a dead man? I'm dead in Christ. My life is hid in Christ. I'm fully covered. I'm fully defended. As they went forth, he gave them power. He said, you will tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the devil. That's why I don't look for them. They run away from me. He said, and lo, I'm with you. All way. I'm with you. Just go. I'm with you. The greatest way to attract divine presence is to be on duty for him. Amen. To be on duty for him. Many years back, I was flying from uh, no, Kano to Meduguri. And as I entered the plane, and here host came and met me and said, Sir, can I know you? I said, What about that? He said, When you came in, something came in. I said, I'm not surprised. The one who sent me on mission is backing me up at all the time. He sent me on mission, he's my commissioner. So he goes with me. What am I saying to Ross Church? Go to the street, go to the highway, go to the edges. We have prayed enough in church. Let's go and bring them. Let's go and do what? Let's go and bring them. Who says so? Jesus. It's not a church doctrine. It's Jesus who says so. He said, go and bring them. That my house may be filled. God wants his house to be filled. There are many of us seated here. We can do that. Don't ask what will I tell them. Go and tell them your testimony. Tell them your testimony. Do you see how Jesus saved me? I was a dead drunkard before. I didn't have a family before. But see how Jesus taught me. Because they need it. They will follow you. They will follow you. And you see how lives have been changed. Testimonies of people everywhere. That is what God wants for you. Let's wake up. Otherwise, we will soon lose the mystery of the new creation we are talking about. That passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, began with who we are, but also tells us what we must do to retain our status in what God has made us to be. In Genesis, God made man to be like him, but he gave him assignment. Keep the garden. The assignment God has given to us is reconciliation. We are his ambassadors. Ambassadors enjoy immunity only when they carry out responsibility. Let's go. There are people here. This is Wednesday. By Sunday, 10 people will follow you to church here. Yeah. How? You go and bring them. How many of us will do that? You go and bring them. Amen. <laughs> you go and bring them. And he that repeat, receive edge wages. So as you bring them, you bring them to God and say, God, I brought them all. And God say, yes, I'm marking it. I'm marking it. Then before you know it, your wages start answering you. We just finish and, you know, our... Our outreach, one outreach, we do it from time to time. We just finished it last two Sundays. And the same night when we finished, somebody called me from Lagos here, not our church member. And said, the Lord laid on my heart to bring something to you. I'm coming. I'm coming tomorrow. <laughs> he that repeat, receive it with Jesus. Seek the first, the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to all, 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 including houses. All shall be added to you. All shall be added to you, including jobs. Diverse miracles shall be added to you. You just carry his thing on your head and you will carry your things on, your, on his head. Carry his things. Carry his kingdom. Be crazy. Don't be a seat occupier in church. Do something to serve God. You can't serve him and miss your blessing. I'm telling you, I'm a practical example of what I'm talking about. I don't look for things. I don't buy things. Sir. I just get things. I get things. 
Please permit me sharing my testimony. I just get things. For more than 10 years, I never bought a car. How? My head inside everything with God. He said, for your father in heaven, know it that you have needs for these things. Leave the needs. Seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And all the needs. That is where the church will need to get back to. Until recently when the church abandoned God and started confessing for things. I confess car. I confess house. Confess job. Contract. I confess it. That's when struggle began in the church. Let's get back to Sozo. And the easier way. What do you prefer? Additions or struggles? All these things shall be added. No stress. It's easier for somebody to come to you and give you the key of a house than for you to build a house. Yes. Amen? <laughs> but how will you get it? Seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Somebody is out there, some people are somewhere around some drinking joints here. They don't know how to come to church. Take a bus there. This coming Sunday. This coming Sunday. How many people will do that? This coming Sunday. Take a bus there. 18 seater bus. And tell them, hey, enter, enter. They say to where? To Fountain of Life. Enter, let's go. And don't tell me they will say no. Many of them are looking for help. I'm talking to you from experience. They have tried all the cool. They have tried all the cool. Tell them, my Jesus will save you. My Jesus wants to bless you. There is nobody who hears that God wants to bless them and they say no. That my house may be filled. Now, until the advent of New generation banks. Many of you will know what I'm talking about. In the bank before, you know, bank officials will sit and be waiting for customers to come. They wait for customers to come. And when customers come, uh, customers say, I don't have a photograph. They say, oh, go and get your photograph. Go and get your CAC registration. Go and get them. But when the new generation banks came, they will come to you to market their products to you. You say, I don't have photograph. They already have their telephone camera. <laughs> you say, I, I'm very busy. They say, we'll bring the card to you. We'll bring the card to you. I hope I'm not talking to a banker here. <laughs> they, they will do everything they can. They market everything until people shifted ground and were going into these new generation banks. We have Jesus to market. Let's go to the street. I go everywhere. I go to raw market to go and talk to people who sell in the market. And what's the message to them? Jesus wants you to prosper. Jesus wants you to sell. And I'm hearing amen from somewhere. I'm hearing amen from somewhere. All of you, lift up your hand. In the name of Jesus, my Father, bless everyone here. Don't let them labor in vain. Bless the works of their hands. Now, I pray for you. You need to give your life to Jesus if you want this blessing to remain. How many of you want to give your life to Jesus? Now, after that, there's a special program coming up next Sunday. If you want this blessing to continue, this is part A of the blessing. You need part B. So you must come to Fountain of Life Church. That's what we are doing. He said he's giving us the word, the message, the market of reconciliation. So we have to go to the market. If we don't want to die like the old banks, some of the new generation banks bought, bought the old banks. And don't you have many things to market? Sorry, sir. You go to the market, tell them, see how healthy I'm looking. Won't you like to be healthy? I tell them. I tell them. I tell them. I said, look at me here. Won't you like to be healthy like me? Yeah, 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 I would like to. I tell them. Do you see the way I'm smiling? I tell them, if I tell some of you my age, you may not believe. Yes, I say, can you see some of you, you are looking older than me? Yes, I say, it's true. Don't you want to get to be fresh like me? Okay, you have to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. We have so many things to market. You know those new generation bank? When you say you have open account, they say open for your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Is that not what they say? Yes, sir. Yes. They say open for your son. Yes. They say open for the future of your children, for Amen. their school. Amen. <laughs> They market just anything to anybody. Yes. Let us go and market yes. Jesus to people. Yes. We have what it takes. Tell them your story.
tell them I was once a failure. Yes. See how Jesus changed my life. Is that not somebody's testimony here? Yeah. I was a drug addict. Yes, but see how Jesus has made me good. Amen. I look at them and say, some of you are here. I feel for you. You don't have a house. You don't have land. You've been working for 20 years. Bro. You use all the stuff wow. to smoke, to drink. I don't mean to accuse you. I don't mean to abuse you. I want to see change in your life. So how many of you want to be saved? And you see them raise their hands. And they come to Jesus. Let's go and market this product. That's what Jesus did. Jesus was a marketer of the gospel. He saw the Samaritan woman. He said, woman, I saw you laboring to fetch water here. I want to give you some water here right now. And the woman said, is that so? Is that so? And by herself, she went to the city to drag oh, everybody yeah. Yeah. to come to church yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. We are reconciled Amen. to reconcile others. We are saved to Amen. save others. Salvation will lose its value mm. when it is not extended to others. And as a matter of fact, they will soon drag you back to sin. You know what's happening in our world today? Because we are not reaching out to the world, the world is reaching out to yeah. the church. Yeah. And today you see many people copying the world and the church, yeah. making reference to, according to them, stars in the world. What we should be doing, we are not doing it, so they are penetrating into the church That's to right. pollute us. That's right. That's right. Because we have sat down, folding our hands, like the whole generation of banks. Today, let's make the church hot. Amen. By having people coming from somewhere in the junction in the Kedja here yes. and say, I want to thank God for my life. I was once a smoker. Now, Jesus has entered into my life. I was once an harlot. I hear such testimonies from time to time. Right. A lady came unashamed. He said, I was once an harlot. I used to smoke. I used to drink. But someday, somebody came from this church. Someday, the bishop came and preached to us and I gave my life to Jesus. That's how it happens. Yes, sir. Let's go and market Jesus. We have what it takes to market him. Look at how handsome you are, how beautiful you are. I tell women, when you go to the salon and they are dressing your hair, as they are dressing your hair, be dressing somebody's life. They say, Madam, I've been watching you for these years. Things are working well. And you just glean over his hair and say, We just thank God. No, not, don't just thank God. Tell them what is making your life to shine. You go to your mechanic, they are repairing your car, and you are wasting the time there. You tell the mechanic how the engine of his life can be repaired. You go to a barber, they are cutting your hair, collecting your hair, collecting your money, and you leave the place free. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what they said? They said, stagnant water stinks. Yes. We are stinking today in church because we are not bringing fresh yeah. people in. Every time we bring people in, Philip went to Samaria and preached. And what happened? There was a great joy in the city. Excitement in the church will multiply. What gives us the greatest joy is that we see souls saved in the church. Even Jesus said it. He said there is joy in heaven over one soul that is saved. Please give Jesus a big hand if somebody is blessed tonight. Now raise your hand and speak to God. Now, remain seated if you can. Just raise your hand as you are seated and tell God, Lord, I want to be a reconciler. I want to be an agent of change. I want to reconcile the world to you. Use me, Lord. Now, be very specific. Pray that prayer right now. Pray that prayer seriously. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Will you want to ask God to awaken you by the word you've had tonight to use you to reach out to soul? Souls that will come to church with you on Sunday, please be very specific. Be very specific. Lord, give me souls that will come with me to church to serve you. Use me as agent of reconciliation to bring people to you and to your house, to bring people to your kingdom and into this church. Somebody pray that prayer. Pray it loud. Pray it loud. Pray it as if you are praying for healing. Pray as if you are praying for financial prosperity. Pray that prayer right now. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Now, Stretch your hands here, please. As new creation, I decree that everything that is interfering with your well-being be caused right now. Yeah. Sickness is not part of new creation. 
I command it to be out of your life right now. <laughs> Diseases and incurable ones for that matter, they are not part of new creation. I charge them to be out right now. <laughs> I decree the dawning of a new day for you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Go from here and enjoy all the virtues of new creation. <laughs> Wake up in the morning to discover that those strangers are no more there. Job seekers, wake up in the morning, good news waiting for you. Every expectation in business and career, wake up in the morning, they are calling you. My father, every desire of everyone here, they call you barren, they call you unfruitful, I decree that your story is changing right now. Confused, beaten, battered, I decree a new day for you. I decree that all old things are fully passed away. Behold, all things about you are become new. All things about you are become new. All things about you are become new. And let all the saints of God shout the loudest amen. And Father, I pray as a privileged co-laborer with your servant here, let your church continue to grow. Let your church continue to multiply. Let your church continue to advance. Let the light loaded in this church begin to reflect in the neighborhood. Let multitudes be saved and let them be established to the glory and praise of your name. Somebody wave your hand, give glory to Jesus. He's worthy of our praise.